so hello guys welcome back to our youtube channel guys today in this video we are diving into the world of reactors the backbone of any chemical process right guys reactors are where raw material undergoes chemical reaction to become a valuable products and guys in this video we will explore three primary types of reactor which are batch reactor continuous stir tank reactor which is cstr and plug flow reactor which is PFR and guys by the end of this video you will have a clear understanding of how the reactor works how each of this type of reactor works then their advantages and disadvantages and where they are best applied okay guys so now let's get started with the first type of reactor which is batch reactor okay so guys this type of reactor is a closed system meaning all the reactants are added at the beginning of the process okay and the reactor is then sealed and then the reaction is allowed to proceed over a set period of time without any additional inputs of the reactants or removal of the products during that particular time okay guys in simple words batch reactor is a closed system where initially all the reactants are fed into the reactor for the reaction and the reactor is then sealed out after which for a particular period of time with the particular set parameters the reactants are made to react and which leads to formation of the product but guys we need to make sure here that in the batch reactor the product is collected at the end of the particular time which has been fixed not before or during the time of reactions okay guys the key feature of batch reactor is its versatility since the entire process is self-contained which is in a closed system you can precisely control the reaction time temperature pressure and concentration and guys this makes the batch reactor ideal for small scale production particularly in the industries where the different products are made in varying batches such as pharmaceutical or specialty chemicals got it however guys the batch reactors aren't without any drawbacks for one they are not suitable for large scale production because of the downtime required to load and unload the reactor and also the cleaning between the batches okay and guys this makes the batch process labor intensive and less effective on a large scale additionally managing the heat transfer can be challenging especially for the exothermic reaction where the reaction releases heat and can lead to temperature hot spots okay guys in summary the batch reactors are best when flexibility is more important than scale clear and guys they shine in the application requiring high precision and control over the reaction conditions but are less efficient for continuous or high volume productions okay so guys this was a brief about the batch reactors now moving on towards the second type of reactor which is continuously stirred tank reactor popularly known as CSTR guys unlike the batch reactor a CSTR operates continuously meaning the reactants are continuously fed into the reactor and the products are continuously removed out of the reactor and inside the reactor an agitator keeps everything mixed ensuring that the composition of reactor contents is uniform throughout the batch guys in simple words the cstr which is continuously stir tank reactor is somewhat similar to that of the batch reactor but the major difference here is in continuously stir tank reactor the reactants are continuously added into the reactor and the product is continuously getting collected from the reactor while in the case of batch reactor it was like that for a particular period of time the reactants are fed into the reactor then the product gets formed there and after the particular time of reaction only after then the products are getting collected okay guys the beauty of CSTR lies in its ability to maintain the steady state operations here in CSTR once the system reaches equilibrium the concentration of reactant and products remains constant over the period of time and this makes the CSTRs ideal for processes that requires a continuous output like the production of bulk chemical 
where consistency and efficiency are key role okay so guys we need to take care of maintaining the steady state operation and reaching the equilibrium in mind when we are working with CSTR which means whenever during the reaction we have achieved the equilibrium after that we can add reactants continuously into the reactor and continuously collect the products out of the reactor okay guys talking about the advantages and disadvantage one major advantage of CSTR is its capacity for large scale production and because it operates continuously it is possible to produce a consistent stream of product over extended periods making it highly efficient for industrial scale processes okay guys furthermore the well mixed nature of the reactor makes it easily to control the temperature and reaction conditions okay which is crucial for maintaining the product quality right but guys there are some trade offs CSTR generally requires a large reactor volume compared to the reactors such as PFRs and that is to achieve the same level of conversion and this is because the continuous mixing dilutes the concentration of the reactants leading to lower conversion per unit volume and additionally achieving and maintaining the ideal flow rates and steady state conditions can be complex especially when scaling up from laboratory to industrial scales okay i hope it is clear to you right to sum it up guys CSTR are best suitable for continuous processes where consistency and large scale production are essential and they offer great control over the reaction conditions but requires more space and careful management of the flow rates to maintain the efficiency okay so guys this was a brief about the second type of reactor which is continuously stirred tank reactor popularly known as CSTR now moving on towards the last type of reactor for this particular video on types of reactor is plug flow reactor okay guys so in a pfr which is plug flow reactor the reactant flows through a cylindrical pipe ideally with no mixing in the direction of the flow got it and this means that the reaction progresses as the reactants move along the reactor creating a concentration gradient from the inlet to the outlet so guys in simple words pfr which is plug flow reactor is a reactor which seems like that of a cylindrical pipe and guys in this cylindrical pipe the reactants are led to flow from the initial position and making it flow towards the end of the pipe but guys here you need to focus on the thing that the reactants get mixed in the radial direction but not get mixed in the axial direction which is they don't get mixed in the direction of the flow but they get mixed in the radial direction okay guys pfr are highly efficient especially for the reactions that are fast and where the high conversion per unit volume is desired okay guys guys the lack of axial mixing ensure that the reactant at the inlet are at the highest concentration while they can drive the reaction more effectively leading to high conversions compared to the CSTR. Guys, this makes the PFR particularly valuable in the industries where space efficiency and high conversion rates are crucial such as petrochemical processing. In simple words, guys, PFR is the most effective and most efficient type of reactor compared to the CSTR and batch reactor where the space efficiency is a great concern and higher conversion rate per unit volume is a concern okay means where the high conversion per unit volume is desired you need to use a PFR reactor where here in the PFR it is a cylindrical type of reactor where there is no axial mixing and we observe only radial mixing and this seems like that when the reactants get entered into the PFR at the initial position there is radial mixing and highest conversion of reactants at that position compared to that of CSTR ok guys so this was one of the key advantage of PFR another key advantage of PFR is the compact design for the same conversion a PFR typically requires less volume than the CSTR 
making its space efficient. And guys, this is especially important in industrial setting where the space is a premium and a maximum production capacity within a limited footprint is crucial. Okay guys, however guys, PFR comes with their own challenges and that is the unidirectional flow creates temperature gradients along the length of the reactor which can be problematic particularly in the exothermic reactions where the heat release needs to be managed carefully okay guys additionally pfr can be more difficult to scale up as maintaining the consistent flow and reaction conditions along the entire length of the large reactor becomes more complex so guys these were the two disadvantages of pfr guys in summary for pfr PFRs are ideal for high efficiency reactions which require compact reactor design and higher conversion rates. Okay. However, they demand careful attention to temperature control, flow dynamics and especially when scaling up is a concern. Okay. So guys, this was a brief upon the third type of reactor which was PFR, plug flow reactor. Now guys, let's compare this reactor to see how they stack up against each other okay guys the batch reactor is all about flexibility and control but falls short in the large scale production which is large scale continuous production right then talking about the CSTR on the other hand is perfect for continuous operation with consistent product quality even though it requires large volumes and careful flow management okay Finally, talking about the PFR, PFR offers the highest conversion efficiency in a compact design but can be tricky to scale up and manage the temperature. Okay, so guys, choosing the right reactor depends on your specific needs. For a flexible, small scale production, the batch reactor is your go to. For consistent, large scale output, the CSTR is hard to beat. But if you are after efficiency and space saving, the PFR might be your best option. Okay guys, clear? In conclusion, understanding these differences between the reactors is crucial for optimizing your process. Each reactor type has its strengths and weakness. So it is important to choose the best one which best fits your process requirements. Whether you are working in a pharmaceutical, petrochemical or any other type of industry, Selecting the right reactor can significantly impact your process efficiency and product quality. Okay guys, so that's all for this video. Guys, I hope you like this video and thank you for watching. And guys, for more video related to chemical engineering, process engineering, chemical safety, industrial safety, you can subscribe to this channel. And guys, as always, feel free to leave any questions or comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in next video.